What is up, everybody? We have 10 minutes with my good friend. If you've listened to the podcast, you know him, the Ryan Muckenhern. Ryan, we got a letter the other day. Somebody called you like the Wikipedia of hunting, shooting, angling, and then I called you Wiki Ryan. You didn't, you didn't like I that? I like that. Okay. Anyway. Hello. <laughs> All that aside, we're gonna t- hello. We're gonna talk about a subject that you and I are both very passionate about. Super passionate. An underrated, underutilized piece of gear. We're talking shooting sticks today. Should you carry them? I, you could probably hear from the enthusiasm in my voice. The answer is yes. There's a variety of styles. Which ones? We've got a handful of them right here. Uh, a couple we like, a couple we've used. Uh, Ryan, let's let's jump right in. Let's talk about the advantages and how you're using a shooting stick. And maybe you probably, like me, kind of use one style most of the time. But uh, how are you using it? Which one are you using it? Why? Well, let me back up. Um, so I was in Wyoming last week hunting, uh, and my hunting partner and I were looking over this valley and talking about stuff. And um, we were talking about shooting sticks and it being one of the four things required for success while afield. And when you audit it, it's like gun, license, bullets, shooting stick. Yeah. And like the rest is is kind of like auxiliary equipment that you may or may not need. Throw in a knife, you yeah. know, sharp yeah. stone, yeah. you know, that'll yeah. work. You can too, always make do with something else, but a shooting stick is a pretty pivotal piece of my um, gear loadout. Um, and so I got on shooting sticks really kind of because of him he he'd hunted all over the u.s and actually globally um prior to me hunting with him and he was a big shooting stick guy um i went out and i bought a very tall bipod because i'm pretty tall so i bought this like can extend to 27 inch bipod and i hung that on my rifle for like two years a um, couple things it weighed like 20 and some ounces sure. very heavy um and then it was actually quite limiting in use like i could use it seated but not all the way seated um because it was either too tall for me sitting okay and then i had to like really extend my torso um i certainly couldn't use it prone because the minimum height was like i don't know like 14 to 16 inches it was too tall mm-hmm. um and then it was of course this big heavy thing on the bottom of my rifle that kind of influenced how my rifle shot and how i shot and it was just a kind of a pita if you will Oh, that's an acronym. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. By it's that. an acronym. P I T A. Okay. Um, look it up. Uh, so got onto the shooting stick train, and I have not gone back. Um, I'm I'm so dug deep into shooting sticks now that I I really don't use a bipod ever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We and we sat. We counted the number of times that we shot off of a bipod in the past, like 15 years of hunting together, 14 years of hunting together, and I think in the past like seven. If I've shot off a bipod like three times. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I think it's a far more versatile tool than a bipod um, and, a, and a better rest, really, truly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think our loadouts are very similar in that regard. Now, I don't want to disparage the bipod because there's a lot of really good ones out there. Yeah. Uh, I've used some of those really good ones, and I'll say there's actually been a, a handful of situations where it was unequivocally the tool for the job sure. and, and allowed me to make a shot that otherwise I probably wouldn't have made, sure. right? Uh, in most of my situations, I'd say probably about 90% of, the, 90% of the time, I'm going no bipod, backpack, which actually I'll intentionally kind of, uh, sometimes I'll keep, you know, I keep my puffy jacket and my, uh, you know, maybe my soft shell in there. Well, just because I have those all the time, you know, it gets cold in the morning. But that's nice to puff up your pack and makes an excellent shooting rest if I want to be in kind of that more prone position. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I'm going to the shooting stick. Yes, I agree completely. So, um, uh, you know, and actually you're talking about, like, I don't want to talk down about bipod, but you're talking about, you know, height adjustment and, and maybe speed of height adjustment. Yes. I was trying to shoot an odd ad one time, and I had my pack, and I had my uh, bipod, and I was like, you know, I had my bipod out because I'm like, oh, I got to use my bipod. And I actually had it. I couldn't have it on the ground because it wasn't quite high enough. And then, you know, this dynamic situation. And then I put it on top of my pack and it was a little bit too high. And then I folded it up and I then I just shot off, <laughs> shot off my pack. So, yeah. but that's not shooting sticks. But um, what uh, what style you got right there? So this is a very simple design. Um, this is a no longer available product. This is from uh, the Easton Company. Great guys and gals over there. Uh, they called this their cross shot shooting stick, and it's an aluminum design. But what's really clever about it is that it takes down much like their trekking poles do, via a push button, 
and then an internal cord. Whoops, I didn't push that up there far enough. There we go. Gosh, it's always... So you're trying to do something on camera. It never works oh, out as fast as you want. You just look like a FUD. Um, anyway, it folds down and nests up into this clever little um, takedown piece here. Like so. And so I like this because when I'm not using it, I can stow it in my pack, on my pack. I actually, there's a little pocket on the side of my stony that I stuff this in, and then I run a strap over it and mm -hmm. cinch mm -hmm. it down and... And then I, I can actually access it while I'm wearing my pack and just pull it out and deploy them if need be. Mm -hmm. Now, when, it, when I'm in the field, I pretty much always have them out. So it's right. not, not a situation in which I'm, I'm walking around stickless and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's one. And then you pull your sticks out. That doesn't really happen. That, that's one thing that I really wanted to point out is being cognizant of where you are, yeah. how you're hunting, and when you think you might get that opportunity, which oftentimes is... At any point, you yeah. know, but th there's, you know, a handful of times where, yeah, I've got them packed away. Maybe you're doing a long trek or something like that. Yep. But most of the time I do have them at the ready. When I get to a spot where maybe I'm glass and they are fully deployed, they are, you know, I've actually pre-examined and been like, okay, I might likely get a shot over here, over here, over here. What's the terrain look like? Now, mine uh, operate a little, you know, similarly, it's, it's got a, you know, shot cord design in here, kind of like if you've run like a, a tent pole, I guess it's going to be similar to that. Um, you know, they fold up about the same size, you know, as yours did, you've got yours fully deployed right now, but, um, again, lightweight, easy to deploy fast. And then, you know, operating under the same principle as yours, as far as like, kind of like a rubber grommet in the middle. And if you're watching on YouTube, this is how you adjust your height. And this is how fast you can adjust your height. And if you've got uneven terrain, it really doesn't matter. No. You're not really having to futz with it. It's an, it's an easy kind of like more of a gross movement. And we're talking a little bit about dynamic, fast scenarios. You know, sometimes if you've got something you've got to fiddle with, that, that might make the difference between, you know, getting that critter or not oh, getting you're that moving critter. Your, you're moving your focus on the animal, the shot, the wind, like everything else. And you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to like turn this small knob and move a leg out of, you know, 16th of an inch or something. It's a total pain in the butt. Um, some criticism I've got from them, though, in any design, because I have, I have a couple others, too. I've got just some fixed fiberglass sticks from a company called Venom Outdoors that have been running for a long time, too. But mm -hmm. people will say, like, oh, you're very limited in the shots that you can take. Like, you're, you're bound to a seated position. Um, and I, I actually disagree with that completely. Um, they're certainly tall enough to accommodate somebody my height um, in a seated position, and they do a fabulous job of that. But like you had showed there, when you spread them out, so long as you have good terrain, and most of the designs and examples that we have here have like a sharp spike foot, mm -hmm. like an ice cleat almost on their little carbide tip, you can kind of dig that into the ground, and, and you're not getting necessarily prone, mm -hmm. but you're you're just you're in that gray zone between prone and seated, where, you know, prone is advantageous if you have a flat surface, um, and nothing in front of your barrel, no grass, no sage, no brush, right. nothing, no rocks, trees, sticks, things like this, um, and it's 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 kind of infrequent that you're you're in that position with an unobscured or unobstructed you know, flight path to your bullet. So you can get into that gray area just above prone and, and seated or between prone and seated, um, quite handily. And then actually, um, something I had demonstrated, we were doing a, a hunter marksmanship class at, at, uh, with the, the edge instructors and somebody's talking about like, well, what can't you do with them? And the, the answer is really nothing. One of my favorite things to demonstrate with them, I haven't been able to, to field it yet is a prone high angle shot with shooting sticks where I'm, where I'm prone and the fore end of my rifle is of course nestled in the stick mm -hmm. and I'm actually shooting up at a very high angle. Okay. Right. And, and you can go from horizontal to almost what feels like vertical when you're doing it. Um, and the same is true for the inverse as well, if you're shooting downhill. So I think that, I think that the versatility over a bipod is, is unmatched. Anything I'm going to do lower than these sticks can accommodate. I'm doing off my pack. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the pack is going to be this super long, fluffy, stable platform where so much more advantageous than a bipod anyways, because I don't have this, you know, unsupported rear of the rifle. Um, th this is just, to me, the answer if you're going to 
look for one stability mm-hmm. system. Yeah, I had a uh, a couple sets of man. It seems like a, what what happened to all the good shooting stick companies? I don't know, Ryan? man. Uh, I think they were called Predator sniper sticks. Yep. And one was more of a fix. It was made from just a like a single heavy duty uh, carbon fiber arrow with kind of like. Uh, Gosh, I can only describe it as like, it was like, uh, if you've ever seen those old Cabela's Buff Tough uh, arrows, it was kind of like a uh, textured carbon coating on on the outside of the arrow. Uh, It had uh, a couple, uh, you would actually just screw in field points like you would in the bottom. I lost those immediately. Didn't find (laughs) any lack of performance. Uh, And then they had more of like a fixed rubberized top. Mm, Not that. Not, not really like that. I mean, anyway, but the, it uh, stayed put yep. versus these ones, which actually, so then I had a version of those same sticks uh, that operated similar to these, but the top was actually better. I actually, uh, in a case of mistaken identity, I uh, um, they looked conspicuously similar to these. I was hunting with a guy, we'll call him Ken B. Fantastic in- individual. Uh, this was not intentional, but we traded shooting sticks, and the tops of these actually... Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, would um, slide down. Just always slide. You'd put any pressure on them, and whoop, they'd slide down. So I took a couple pieces of uh, of brightly colored duct tape here. That's a good idea. And it prevents them from sliding down. And is high vis because um, you don't want to leave your shooting sticks like I did two years ago. My uh, full length. Uh, Predator sniper sticks while I was blacktail hunting in Washington. So if, if you found a sweet sh- set of shooting sticks uh, kind of going down a logging road and you dip off uh, into the reap rod, it's super thick, but it kind of opens up into a really cool spot where you can shoot across a valley in some, uh, you know, probably 10, 12-year-old reap rod with some holes it's in it where full, you might it kill It had a lot of blacktails in it? Uh, oh, did you find my sticks, Ryan? No, I'm just keep talking about the area, I would love though. if this person is listening and they'd be like, there's a giant stump there, too. So, okay, actually, so. you can shoot really well off the stump as well, which is why I set my shooting sticks to the side. So, can anyway. You, can you describe any, like, topographical features or anything? We're not there? dropping pins today, oh. Ryan. Okay. Sorry. Uh, anyway, call Vortex if you found those, please. Um, so, we've talked, and and those all kind of operate similarly, yeah. right? Uh, two sticks, rubber grommet together, uh, pull, uh, you know, pull them out or in, you know, depending on what your uh, desired height and I think we've talked about those a lot because that's what we like. Now, what they won't do, you're not going to shoot from a standing position with them. No, I do have a set of standards. Oh, of that same version? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I interesting. don't know where I'm going to use them. I see a lot of that in like Africa, especially. like Right. Yep, when they're, they're kind of walking and stalking. Standards, um, tripod, yep. guy sets them up, yep. boom. Which is kind of like, uh, we've got these here. Uh, this is a trigger stick yep. from Primos. A um, little bit... Whoa, what do we got going on here? We got the... There you go. They're they're connected. It's all connected. If you've... (laughs) That's a good show. Um, So, a little bit bigger, heavier, more robust. They definitely have their place. In my opinion, this would be more of a... Maybe I know where I'm going and I'm not going... I know I'm not going that far sort of deal. Um, Excellent ground blind tool. Excellent ground blind tool. Yep. Uh, so I got the tripod version here. You have the the, the bi- bi- kind of bipod bipod version. Yep. And uh, maybe uh, I think uh, well I guess we're probably both we both have cameras. But you know you got the trigger here, and that's gonna you know adjust your height. So and 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 they do deploy pretty rapidly. Um, Articulating swivel head. Right. Gratuitous V notch on the top, so that if you have like a wide forend or you know some sort of large gun, you can put that on there. Um, yeah, I was I was playing with these more than ever this year. Um, we were using them with crossbows. Yep, it was pretty handy. Uh, great tool to like leave in your ground blind if you're if you're going to be returning out there. A little heavy, uh, otherwise I don't know that I would necessarily be porting these uh, on some sort of backcountry hunt. But you could, right? I, I could right. just you know lose a little bit more weight or be stronger. A little bit. I feel like you're prone to get a little bit more, potentially get a clank. You know, a clank yeah. that you don't want in the woods. You know, I mean if you get them together you know you got potential for a little bit noise a little bit more noise there but given the situation like you described i'll be careful with these regarding the noise and i'll take the rest yes because if you can get a rest get 
a rest. Bogpod makes some good ones too. They've got some cool monopod style ones. They've got uh, a variety of them. Um, we need to fix this one. Somewhat similar to this guy here. Uh, I also have Ryan. Again, God, we're bringing out all the old school stuff they don't make anymore, but I guess I got it at the time and I still like it. These are just carbon trekking poles, right? Those, those are nice. So, uh, again, from, from Easton, but there's other companies that, that make a similar uh, trekking pole that would operate uh, the way these do, which is actually exactly like your shooting sticks there. But, uh, um, oh, well, you know, hold on, Ryan. Got to push the silver button. I did it. There we go. Again, like you said, you try and do it, and then you get nervous. It's not working. So, anyway, but, yeah, so these fold down. Um, and I bring these sometimes if I'm trying to save weight or I don't want another item and I'm not going to carry these other shooting sticks. And I think it's maybe open country where I'm likely if, if I'm taking a little bit longer shot, I'm going to be shooting off my pack, but I want to take my trekking poles. I'll bring these to use as trekking poles. And then what a person can do again, you know, um, Essentially, and I think they actually, I think you can buy something that will they do, attach They them. do make a couple little connectors. Connectors. I don't do it. I just figure it's going to be the heat of the moment, and I'm just going to use my hand and, you know, rest my the forearm of my rifle in the crotch there, and then uh, hopefully uh, shoot that animal and use the trekking poles to pack them out. Yes. So, um, a with these ones with kind of like the shot cord, tent style design one thing you'll want to be careful of and i think this was actually better in in the other set that i had the uh elastic in there that shot cord was um had more tension so if you get in soft terrain with these it's like oh they're awesome they're collapsible uh you get in soft terrain like a little bit of mud and you're like the deer's over there and you want to move you will lift the top part of this up this will stay in the ground and now the panic sets in. Yep. Uh, so you just want to always remember if you're using this style, in my opinion, uh, if your sticks are prone to doing that, uh, lift from the bottom. Yeah. And then make your movement. So I, it's kind of an extra thing. That's, I why, had that's a, why I liked the, the fixed ones. I had a similar set, um, and I was calling coyotes in the wintertime in some kind of sticky snow, but on top of ice. And I don't know... I don't think that the tips melted into the ice. Something happened, and the same thing that you described, only insert coyote instead of deer, moved across my, my field of fire here, and I picked them up, and the bottom sections gave, then the middle sections gave, and then I was holding the top while everything else was stuck in the snow, and then they came out. <laughs> and it's just this comedy of errors and, like, pieces of, of shooting stick flying everywhere, like, clanking into each other. I did not get that coyote. Um, I then glued the sections together. Interesting. Yep. 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 Which was fine. But this, you know, this being a robust locking design, that, that, that I don't have that problem with. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Did we, did we cover just about everything? I think so. I think if you're, you know, especially if you're, you're doing a, a lot of hunting in a lot of varied terrain, and this is not something specific to the Western hunter. Um, I carry these in the Midwest as well. I shot, actually my best whitetail off a set of shooting sticks in central Minnesota. Um, it's, it's worthwhile having a good set in your, in your gear. Mm -hmm. Like they're infinitely useful. They make a nice walking stick too. If you're like on a casual stroll into or out of the hunting area, yep. you kind of feel like Mr. Peanut. I think he carries a cane. <laughs> um, that's but what yeah, I feel like. Not their intended use, but yes, I've used you know, a little, maybe a little bit more gingerly than you would yeah. a, a a real trekking pole, but yeah, that you can use them to stabilize yourself yeah. and as a pseudo uh, walking stick. But okay. I think the point here is uh, definitely, man, if you can get a rest, it is better than not having a rest. And I, there are times where I might want a shooting stick. I want might want my pack, and I and I do have a, a good bipod, mm -hmm. right? Just because. Um, it's just going to improve your odds of yes. executing an accurate shot. Yeah. So, uh, thanks everybody for listening. We've kept this one barely sub twenty. Congratulations, Ryan. We did it. The clock is red. I don't know what it turns to after that, but I don't want to see it. Thanks everybody for listening. <laughs> if you haven't been using shooting sticks, use some shooting sticks. If you've got a model that you like that's still in production, let us know. And uh, happy hunting. See ya. <laughs>